Hey comic book friends, it's actually a hot end of September here in Oregon. Uh, Sleepy Reader here with my comic book haul of the week, my pull list that I just went to the store and grabbed. It's kind of in a rush and I didn't want to buy any more comics so I didn't even check the racks, didn't look to see if there were comics I'd missed or comics that they gave me in variant, variant editions that I don't want. Um, they're all in this bag. I'll, I'll pull them out in a second. Um, I'm also going to try at the end of this video just to say a few words about some of the comics I read from last week. I'm not finished with my huge stack from last week. And now I've got more. And I've got stragglers from other weeks too. So this is becoming a problem. Um, I mean, I already have stacks and stacks of to-be-read comics elsewhere from other other things, you know, back issues and all that. So it's getting crazy. Um, there's still not a lot of Rebirth I want to drop. I did drop All-Star Batman. I can either read it and trade later or I don't really care. I just, with the issue two, I just felt like I didn't care very much. I dropped Batgirl and the Birds of Prey. It just, I don't know, it particularly did not groove with me. Uh, there's nothing wrong with it, but... I just felt like I could let it go, so I let it go. And I also have let go Rick Remender's um, uh, Black Science, which used to be like one of my most favorite indie books. And just, it turned off in another direction for me, and it's not not really what I want to read anymore. I don't know. It, it feels to me more like a, a jokey fantasy story instead of a hard-hitting, bitter science fiction story anymore. So here's the thing, uh, Quacking Duck now loves Perrier, um, so I got a whole case of it. Uh, it was fairly cheap to get in these cans, and now I'm so thirsty I'm having one. I don't know if it's still true, but when I was in college, we totally made fun of people who drank Perrier. So <clears throat> let me see what I got. I think it's going to be a huge amount of um, Rebirth. Ah, Blue Beetle number one. I I didn't even realize I'd read a Rebirth issue before, so it's another number one. It's the same team. I assume it will be the same story, so it's one of those meaningless two number ones in a row kind of thing. Oh, I'm kind of psyched for Hellblazer number two. I liked Hellblazer Rebirth number one, and I liked Hellblazer number one. So we'll hopefully keep going in that way. I like seeing that the Swamp Thing's on the cover. This is this is, looks like a fun cover to me. Man, I really should drop The Flash. It just hasn't been good, and yet I want to keep reading it, so I'm still reading it. Um, we'll see if that goes over the edge, finally. Deathstroke. I'm really looking forward to this. Uh, the two other, or has it been three other? Was there a Rebirth? One shot, Deathstroke issues have been really good. Uh, Christopher Priest is doing an excellent job here, um, and looks like a new artist. But uh, the last artist was good. Um, oh, this is an awesome cover, and Patrick Zercher, Zercher is the artist, so it should be good. Um, Dan Jurgens has been doing a a strong, solid job on action. But uh, I really enjoyed last issue's focus on this new, possibly fake Clark Kent. <clears throat> Let's see. Strangely, because I've hated the art, I'm looking forward to, to Titans. I think partially because I've be reading Aquaman's made me more confident in Dan Abnett, so I want to see what he's got up his sleeve for Titans. This one's coming out monthly, I believe, so it's a slower rollout. Or is it? Is it... Maybe it's twice a month. I'm not even sure. Um, but it's not as far into its story as Aquaman. So maybe maybe there's some exciting stuff to come there. Um, new Superman. I feel like I just read this. And this one definitely is monthly. But maybe I am I was just behind slow on getting around to reading it. So that's why it feels like it's coming out again already. Uh, I've, it's definitely been, you know... A down the line fun book, even though this guy, this writer, just won the Genius Award, uh, he seems no more the the writer of it. Uh, 
Yang, Glenn Yu. I can't remember his name, his first name. Sorry, Greg or Glenn. Um, anyway, he just won the MacArthur Award, Genius Award, where I wonder if he'll keep reading, uh, writing DC Comics after that. Probably. But uh, I think he's going to get like $300,000 or no, $600,000 as a award for being a genius. Uh, I don't see this as any more genius than any other comic, but it's a good, solid, fun DC comic. And obviously he won his Genius Award for something else than DC. They wouldn't get, they don't give people who are known as DC Comics Writers Genius Awards by the McCarthy. They're usually their famous writers or inventors or scientists. Um, Detective Comics, I am really dreading this. Night of the Monster Men, number three. If it were easy to tell the people at my shop just skip certain issues, I might have skipped all of the Night of the Monster Men issues especially retro, retrospectively. Um, this is really cool. I don't know how many of you know the Frank Frazetta painting that this is a homage or ripoff of, uh, what do they call all these covers where they, one cover after another, um, takes. Anyway, this is a, originally, as far as I know, a Conan cover by Frank Frazetta where there's a woman on the altar, a wizard about to sacrifice her, and Conan in the position there where Wonder Woman is. Um, I, I want to say it's for Conan of the Isles or something like that, one of the, uh, one of the original Lancer series of Conan books. <clears throat> and finally for Rebirth, as if that wasn't enough, I've got Batgirl, um, which I'm looking forward to. I'm really loving the Albuquerque art and a lot of people are not getting into this sort of Batgirl as college girl on a trip through Asia, but I'm really enjoying it quite a bit. Um, so I'm looking forward to this next issue. Um, I do hear that Albuquerque's off of it after the first arc, so that makes me a little bummed. But who knows, maybe there'll be another good artist. If not, I can always drop it. Okay, and then the few uh, indies I got. I wonder if there's some missing here. I also dropped Conan, uh, Conan the Slayer, because I really, maybe mostly because I didn't like the art, but I thought this, or I didn't love the art, and I thought the story was kind of generic Conan. Um, but I think if I had taken more time at the shop, I would have probably grabbed this issue because it had a really great cover. I saw it on someone else, on Ghost Critics video. So I got Saga, it's a very pink cover. They did not, last issue they did a wraparound cover. I wish they'd do more of those, I really like those. But yeah, this is not immediately one of my favorite Saga covers. I don't, are here covers as good as they used to be? Um, I'm, I, I wonder if uh, Fiona Staples is slipping a little on the covers. And here is the final issue, I believe it's the final issue, is it number six? Yeah, of, um, Leaving Megalopolis, surviving Megalopolis. Um, this has been good. I think I'm an issue behind. I, I've got to figure that out. This is part of a connecting cover, so um, I should put all those together and take a look at those. Um, so I'm looking forward to that, but I got to catch it. It's one of those comics, I think, that's lagging behind. I'm really psyched for the next installment of Lake of Fire. This had a bit of a different feel than your average image comic, but it was really good. Um, sort of historical uh, fantasy, science fiction, what have you, with crusaders and aliens. Um, yeah, looking forward to that a lot. Here's a very nice cover on Island. I am woefully behind on Island. I've just got a stack of islands that I keep thinking someday I'm gonna take a, you know, a little island vacation and sit down and read a bunch of issues of Island. But I probably should get on that and try to keep up. So, but as I told you, I'm, I'm not very kept up. Here's the bag that my current comic book shop gives to me. To get my 25% discount, they actually charge me for the books um, beforehand. But if they, so I come to the store and I don't have to give them any money or a credit card. Um, but if they've made a mistake, they will give me credit or whatever. They'll do whatever it takes to please me. Usually I'll just pick up another comic book. Um, when they've occasionally given me something that I did not ask for. 
So um, I I was slower at reading comic books this week, and I think it's because I tried by starting with the Night of the Monster Men, and I was just I was just plain bored. I was just not interested in this. I did not think the Monster Men were very interesting. I did like the Riley Rosmo art in the Batman one, so that kept me going a bit. And then when I hit Nightwing, I just started skimming, so I really need to go back and finish reading this before I read the next installment. But that kind of took the um, the air out of my excitement to read comic sales for a few days. I, I think I next picked up the Justice League and I just flipped through it and looked at the pretty pictures um, and got the gist of the story and didn't read it. Um, I should go back and read it even though I kind of figured out what happened from looking through the, the comic. So it took a while to then get back to the other comics. I read Raven with my daughter and she liked it a lot. Um, I didn't like the cover very much, but I liked the interior art and I thought it was a pretty interesting story. I guess I haven't read Raven in years, but she definitely feels, from last I remember her, very de-aged. She feels like she's uh, 15 at the oldest, maybe even 14 to me. Um, but there was a lot of interesting stuff here and thank goodness it was all okay to read with my daughter. It's a little bit of a scary horror story type of thing to read with her, but but I managed to make that work. Um, and I was impressed that um, that uh, Wolfman, George, George Wolfman, <laughs> Marv Wolfman did not, you know, feel like an old writer, even though, I mean, he is the creator or co-creator of Raven, but that was a long time ago. So unlike when we've seen a comic by Len Wein late, lately, it was not retro feeling at all. Um, anyway, it was decent. I'm not sure, you know, for an adult, I just, I read it with a kid and I enjoyed it that way. I'd have to sort of reread it as an adult to totally have an opinion there. Um, then I, as everyone else did, I really loved Superman number seven. There's been something very, both low key and very daring just about the in terms of modern comics the way superman has been going i mean really in seven issues we've had three stories um not counting the rebirth issue which was kind of just a meh but we had like a kind of a two issue arc and even those first two issues each one could almost stand alone by itself then we had a four issue arc that was kind of wild and crazy but ended really cool um, and now we have this standalone, which, you know, in lesser hands could just be a filler that's kind of a waste of our time, but it seemed like the best issue yet. Um, it's just really good. And I have to say, I like a skinnier Superman. Not that he's like the skinniest guy in the world, but um, I prefer it when he's not this giant, thick, bodybuilder looking guy. Here as Clark Kent, he's really quite slender looking, which, uh, you know, try to figure that one out totally. But um, this was just a really good issue. Um, one concern of mine, you know, people talk about how great it is that it's a married Superman and everything is, there's kind of a feeling of once Superman marries her, Lois Lane is kind of the perfect woman. And they managed to handle her being pretty perfect and still make interesting stories. But I think for some writers, that's gonna be a problem. But if you, make her imperfect, what are her flaws, and can they be consistent across all the Superman books? And speaking of consistency, Trinity was also a very low-key story, and that was also very daring. I don't know if they were just independently decided to do that, or kind of had been reading reading the main Superman book and, and followed that motif. Um, but basically, this issue was just a dinner party between the three members of the Trinity. But uh, a dinner party that Lois set up without telling um, Clark, which is kind of a sabotaging bad wife kind of thing to do in my mind, although it's not presented as a bad thing here. It's presented as a good thing and it's proof that she's such a great wife and helpmate and all of that in her life. And she has a bonding moment with Diana and so she's still supposed to be perfect. Um, but I kind of, 
I didn't fully believe, especially the way um, Diana Wonder Woman spoke. It didn't match up with any other Wonder Woman. I don't know. She just seemed like another just idealized female character, but I don't know. I just didn't like the, the her dialogue and the way she spoke. I thought that uh, Batman Bruce Wayne was a bit one-dimensional. I also thought at this point, do they all know and share each other's idea I, identities when this Superman is so new to their universe? It was a kind of a clever idea to have them all warm up to each other, but will they all be warmed up and buddy buddy with each other in other comics? Um, I don't know. So this Trinity is kind of a question mark to me. I wasn't immediately taken by it. I didn't hate it. Um, so we'll see. I kind of hated this issue of the Green Lanterns, um, but I've seen on YouTube some other people really loving it. I do like the character of these two characters, but an issue where they just s sit around or fly around and chat about their psychological problems together, it just felt really, really forced and it, a total lack of what I consider, you know, good storytelling. Um, these, and, and a waste of their neuroses and problems that could have been more cleverly fit into an actual story. Um, yet it really worked for some other uh, people I watched on YouTube. I am really curious about this um, guy from Oa, what do you call them, the guardian, one of these guardians. And so the last page kind of grabbed me. It's like, okay, what's gonna happen next with him? That's a plot thing that I can hook on to. So I will probably get at least another issue or two of the Green Lanterns. Okay, um, I read Seven for Eternity. I kind of suspected I would want to trade weight on it, and now I am uh, stronger in my resolve to trade weight on it. I mean, it's it's a fantasy story with uh, pretty amazing artwork and uh, color. The color is very vibrant, and sometimes I'm upset at colorists because I feel like they haven't figured out what will. Uh, show up well on paper. They're just looking at their computer screens and not, but this definitely is not, does not have that problem. It really looked good on the page, really good coloring. Um, and it, with a palette that sort of a combination of colors that I just felt different from other comics I've, I've looked at recently. Um, it felt like a cool story to me, despite uh, Jared Osborne on Twitter telling me that it's an utterly simple story, that there's nothing difficult to figure out about it, I had trouble with, there's, is there a war between two kingdoms? What two kingdoms? Um, people seem to know our main character, but we're also told he was, his father ran away from the kingdom into the wilderness, and he was born there in the wilderness, and his children were born there in the wilderness. Um, the stakes are very unclear and probably all of that will be clear when you read it all together in a trade. But I, what information I've gleaned from this issue, I may forget by next month and the way it's written in this confusing way for me with my, uh, sleepy doddering brain. Um, it just, it, it seems smarter to get it in a, um, in a trade. However, it's a beautiful package, and in a trade, you're going to um, not be able to see the art as well. I guess there's not too many double-page spreads, although there was that big one that I showed you guys. Uh, but So really, I should wait for the deluxe hardcover. <laughs> that, that'll be a long wait. Okay, uh, great to read in single issues for me is Black Hammer. It's got kind of a both a, a little bit of that... Um, you know, Alan Moore, Deconstruction of Superheroes, but also a strong soap opera feel to it, which I'm really enjoying. Um, and so far, kind of each issue, I guess, focuses uh, mostly on a different one of these heroes and their own personal kind of soap opera and tragedy. I also noticed, I don't know if, if all Dark Horse comics have switched over now, to not having ads in the middle of the story. 
Dark Horse never had a lot of ads in the middle of the stories, but they would have some ads, usually like two, you know, maybe two to three pages of ads stuck somewhere in the middle of the story. And now there are, there were no ads in this one. And there was a really cool making of the cover thing in the back that was really fun to see how, um, how this artist, Dean Ormston, works. I really love Dean Ormston's art here, especially, you know, with Dave Stewart's colors. And of course, Dave Stewart colors are always a big deal. Um, so yeah, the only ads were the one on the back cover and an ad for another comic book at the back of the comic. And I don't mind ads at the back of a comic if I'm getting a good chunk of comics, but when we're paying so much and we're all grown ups here, <laughs> so to speak, we're not just kids anymore reading comics. Um, not that the kids love the ads either. Um, my daughter's always complaining about ads in DC Comics that look too much like a comic book in the middle of the comic, especially that Snickers comic, the Snickers ad. Um, but yeah, there, this is not like a blow your mind great comic, but it's just a fun comic and it has a nice episodic, like I said, soap opera kind of feel to it with a lot of stuff that's familiar from comics, you know, like a Martian Manhunter type of character, but done really well and looks really beautiful. So I'm really pleased with Black Hammer. I hope it, I hope it's not going to be a short run. I hope it goes on a long time and just really slowly keeps developing the way, it, the way it's feeling right now. So, um, yeah, we'll see how many comics I get to this week. Um, hopefully I'm over that minor slump caused by the Monster Man. Maybe I should read the Monster Man at the end of this week and stick to other comics in the meanwhile. Um, so I hope all of you have gotten some great comics or will be getting some great comics sometime this week, and I'll talk to you later. Bye-bye.